In the last class, uh, we were talking about how one would represent uh, the noise of a large network, right? So, as you are definitely aware, uh, we are always dealing with, with networks with a whole bunch of components, resistors, some transistors, uh, you know, whatever. And uh, presumably, uh, the network has an input, uh, which I will call uh, this resistance R s and couples to uh, the network in some fashion like this. Uh, this is the output and uh, so there are multiple noise sources inside. And therefore, there is a associated with each noise source, there is a transfer function from uh, the noise source to the output, right. And uh, you know, all these myriad noise sources uh, uh, go and influence the output in some way, and we know how to calculate the spectral density uh, at the output due to all these noise sources. Hmm? Now, uh, uh, as we were discussing yesterday, when you are giving this block away to uh, somebody else for use, I mean, uh, uh, um, the, the other person is probably not really interested in the gory details of what is going on inside the box, right. So, he is more, he or she is more interested in figuring out, you know, how does this, uh, you know, this amplifier or filter or uh, whatever affect the signal to noise ratio of of my signal, right? My signal is there, it is being processed by this uh, uh, this animal, right? And uh, the output is of course, uh, consists of two parts. One is the signal that is processed by the transfer function that it is supposed to, uh, that is the within quotes desired output. On top of it, there is noise that is added from within the box and uh, you know an obvious question to ask would be you know, how badly is uh, my circuit block uh, degrading the signal to noise uh, ratio of my, of my input signal, right. So, uh, for instance, uh, you know, if you had an amplifier, the job of the amplifier is to take a small signal and make it large, right, in some sense. Now, uh, and the reason why you need a large signal is because this, the circuitry following this amplifier uh, basically is able to discern what is going on. But in the process, the amplifier also adds its own noise. So, the signal increases at the output port of the amplifier, but likewise, there is also a lot more noise at the output than there was at the input. And why is there a lot more noise? There are two reasons for this. One is that the noise that was inherent in the signal itself before it hit the amplifier will get amplified because the amplifier does not know what is signal and what is noise. On top of this amplified noise from the signal source itself, there is internal noise that is generated by the amplifier, okay. And therefore, the total noise at the output will uh, uh, in the best case be simply that which is amplified, um, that of the signal source which is amplified by the amplifier, right. And uh, if, uh, if your amplifier is really bad, then well, it does a great job of amplifying my input signal, but also adds so much noise in the process, right, that in effect, even though the magnitude of the output signal or the power of the output signal at the, uh, is, is very large, right, uh, the fidelity of the signal is degraded so much because in addition to this large signal, you have, you know, uh, uh, more than proportional noise amplification, correct. So, uh, so therefore, when you are characterizing amplifiers and so on uh, or filters for that matter uh, or any circuit for that matter, you would like to be able to estimate or figure out how within quotes, you know, uh, how bad is my signal to noise ratio getting. Uh, uh, I mean, how badly is my signal to noise ratio getting affected because of 
you know, whatever signal processing I am doing inside this, uh, inside this box, right. And uh, since we are not really interested in the gory details of what is happening in the box, a reasonable question to ask would be, okay, well, what if I need to compare uh, the, uh, you know, how the, uh, I mean, compare the signal to noise ratio of my signal source, which is that of this guy here to what the signal to noise ratio uh, uh, would be here, uh, an equivalent way of doing this would be the following, right. So, let us, we ask the question, well, if I found an equivalent noise source, here, where I went and disabled all noise sources inside the network. So, what do I do? So, this is a noisy network and in the picture below, I say, oh, the network, let us assume it is noiseless, right. And uh, I am trying to replace the effect of all these multiple noise sources inside the box with a single noise source, right, uh, which for obvious reasons I will call the equivalent noise source. And uh, in what way should the two be equivalent? I mean, in what sense when we say equivalent, what do we expect? Well, V n equivalent has the same or rather results in the same noise spectral density at the output. Does it make sense? Right? So, all that we are saying is, oh, this is supposed to be an equivalent representation of this myriad noise sources inside uh, 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 the box. And evidently, there is, uh, I mean, if we are, if we are able to club the effect of all these noise sources into one source at the input, right, that is what we call the input referred noise source. Now, let us discuss how we are going to find this uh, uh, input referred noise source. How, I mean, can we, uh, can we think of how we will be able to do this? What do you suggest? Exactly, yeah. So, basically the idea is very simple, right. Uh, we, uh, from V n equivalent to the output here, there is going to be a transfer function, correct. And uh, therefore, S V equivalent of F will be whatever tr transfer function there is from uh, V n equivalent to the output, right. So, that is basically we call that H equivalent times, sorry, this times H equivalent of F the whole square, right, must be equal to well, there are multiple uh, noise sources uh, inside. So, each one of them will yield, oh well, uh, S V K of F times mod H K of F the whole square and you do all this over all the noise sources, okay. And uh, which basically means that you can go and I just do the math and find the spectral density of the equivalent noise voltage source that would result in the same noise spectral density at the output. Does it make sense? And uh, you know as he in English all that this means is that this is nothing but what does this represent? 
the output noise spectral density, right? And uh, this represents well, re recognize that the gain from Vn and from Vn equivalent is the same. This H equivalent of F simply represents the, the gain from the input voltage source to the output and therefore it stands to reason that, you know, uh, uh, you find the total spectral density divided by uh, gain square and uh, this is the spectral density of the equivalent input referred noise source. So, this is, uh, this is an equivalent noise source and this is referred to the input, input referred noise, right. So, is the motivation and the jargon clear now? All right. So, now let us get started. A uh, couple of things that I would like to draw your attention to. One is, uh, you know, our job therefore seems to be uh, A to find the transfer functions from from each of those input sources to the output, right, and uh, uh, also from V n equivalent to the output, right. And well, uh, you know, uh, uh, given a general network, uh, we can only come up with some uh, uh, some broad guidelines. It's uh, without knowing the network, it's evidently not possible to come up with the transfer function, correct. But a couple of observations that I would like to make are the following and to do that I as usual I will uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, use uh, our uh, you know KCL KVL type uh, uh, analysis. Uh, Let us say I am interested in finding the transfer function from V k to V out ok. So, let us say I am interested in finding the transfer function from V k to the output. And as usual, I choose uh, you know this node as uh, as my reference node. That's ground zero. This is one. Uh, this is I don't know node P. Uh, this is node Q. And we write the nodal equations you know as we are used to. And there's only one source here, right? And uh, so if we write the nodal equations, what do we get? We get the MNA matrix. We know how to do this, right? And uh, uh, Let us uh, and the unknowns will be you know all the node voltages all right and well there is only one voltage source. So, the unknown basically is uh, say some I uh, some I sub k right and uh, what do we get on the right hand side yeah and uh, uh, which are the independent sources here is only V k that appears here, correct. And what else do we know? Well, we know that there is a resistance R s from node 1 to 1 to ground. So, if you look at this M n a matrix, this is node 1, all right, and this is the first row. So, this will be G s, all right. And then you have, you know, the rest of the matrix, all right. So, we are interested in finding, we are interested in, what are we interested in finding? This is the set of equations. Now, what are we interested in finding? We are interested in finding V p minus V q, correct. And uh, how do we do that? Well, good old Kramer's rule, right. So, what do you do? So, V p for instance is nothing but yes, what do we do people? I cannot hear you at all man. Very good, right. So, basically you replace, uh, you find the determinant of this matrix, right. Uh, in the on the uh, numerator, what do you do? You have, of course, you have G s here and in the pth column, what do you do? You replace the stuff with uh, you basically you will get 
right? All these will be zero. Does it make sense, people? And what do we have in the denominator? Is simply the determinant of that matrix. So this will be G S and uh, what we had, correct? So of course, this basically means that you can take V k out as common and therefore, you have V p over V k which is the transfer function we are after as the ratio of determinants which, uh, which, is, like, uh, which is like this, right? So, if you expand the determinant, what comment can you make about uh, 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 the numerator? It will be of the form. What comment can we make about, uh, uh, can we make any comment about the form of the uh, numerator? Okay, there will be a whole bunch of terms when you expand the, uh, uh, the determinant out to calculate it. Okay, a term can either consist of GS or not consist of GS, correct? Further, if it consists of GS, GS will appear only in the in the first power. Does it make sense? Right? So, in general, therefore, the determinant corresponding to this matrix can be written in the form, let us say, sum A sub K, right? Because uh, we are doing this uh, with respect to the kth source, right? A sub K times G of S or G sub S plus this A K times G S, basically that A K term simply clubs all those terms with, with G S in it, correct? And therefore, uh, and uh, that is possible only because G S appears in the, in the first power. And then you will have terms without G S, okay? And uh, what comment can you make about the denominator? Well, it will also be of the same form. Uh, obviously, you know the uh, you won't have the same a k and the same b k. So you call this c times g s plus b. Okay, and as we were discussing ex uh, yesterday, uh, you know uh, such a form is called a bilinear form. So if uh, v p by v k is of this form. What comment can we make about V q by V k? Yes, people, you will get a similar form except that it will be some, you know, whatever, right? I am going to call this uh, a k, just to make, running out of subscripts here. So, this is a k q times g s plus Yes, Prashant, B, K, Q. What comment can you make about the denominator? Ah, C, G, S plus D and Y. Is the denominator the same? Oh, well, uh, the matrix below is, uh, is the same. I mean, the determinant below is the same. So, the key takeaway is that, uh, Therefore, if you do V p q, which is V p minus V q by V k, what do you get? What do you think this will, uh, the form of this will be? What will it be? It will also, it will be again of this form, it is A k times G s plus B k divided by C G S plus B. Okay, I hope you guys are convinced about this, uh, right? Okay, so uh, so therefore, the transfer function from any internal noise source to the output will be of this general form, where 
all I have done is basically brought out the, the explicit dependence on the explicit dependence on the source resistance ok and uh, uh, so therefore, if uh, we want I mean let us now at this point not worry about uh, those sources being noise sources. If there were deterministic sources, the total output because of these multiple sources would be V1 A1 Gs plus B1 divided by Cgs plus D, correct? This is the first noise, I mean first source inside the box plus V2 times A2 Gs plus B2 over Cgs plus D blah 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 until you are blue in the face. So, this is uh, you know uh, 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 you know whatever V n A n G s plus B n divided by Cgs plus all right. So, this therefore is the effect of all internal sources on the out. Does it make sense people? The key point to note is that the denominators of all these transfer functions remains the same ok. And this must also gel with your intuition, I mean with your uh, you know uh, prior background, namely that you know this is uh, uh, this is why the poles of any transfer function that you compute in the same network you know is independent of where you put the input and where you take the output right. It is a prop inherent property of the, the uh, network itself and that makes sense because that is coming from the denominator uh, the uh, the determinant of that uh, of that M N A matrix which is a characteristic of it is got no sources inside right. The M N A matrix is just you know uh, got to do with uh, the network and its topology. Hmm? Excellent. So, now we want to find a single voltage source V equivalent whose effect at the output of the amplifier is exactly the same as the effect of all these internal noise sources on the output. This is the effect of all the internal noise sources, uh, all the internal sources on the output, correct? Okay, and uh, we'd like to find what that equivalent input source is, which will have the same output. Correct? So, uh, what comment can we make about? Uh, uh, so, with therefore, we need to find the transfer function from. V n equivalent or V equivalent to the output. So, what comment can you make about uh, 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 the transfer function from uh, V over V equivalent? Pardon? Yes, people? Well, you, uh, I mean, uh, you would say, well, it is the same form. What should be the denominator? C G S plus D, very good. And the, num uh, the numerator is uh, some A equivalent times G S plus B equivalent, but there is a there is a twist, right? Uh, as as R S tends to infinity, what comment can you make about V O by V equivalent? as R s tends to infinity in other words G s tends to 0, what comment can we make about the transfer function from that equivalent source to the output which is the same as asking the question what is the transfer function from the input to the output right when uh, that R s becomes R s becomes infinite right. So, what do you what comment can you make? it is B equivalent by D that is fine right. Uh, so, obviously, as G becomes 0, uh, G s tends to 0 this is B equivalent by D, but uh, simply inspecting the network tells you that 
If I remove the resistor, there is no output to talk of, and therefore this must be equal to zero, right? And therefore, what uh, what does this mean? What does this mean? B equivalent must be must be zero. Is this clear? So, therefore, while V O by V equivalent uh, is of the same form, what we need to understand is that this must be that B equivalent must be 0. So, this must be of the form A equivalent G S divided by C G S plus. All right. So, with that in mind, what is the single equivalent voltage source that has the same effect as all these multiple sources inside? What should we put on the left hand side? Yes? Well, V equivalent times A equivalent times G S divided by C G S plus, right. So, this is the transfer from V equivalent to Okay, so what do you see as happening here? Well, uh, one thing you notice is that all these guys cancel out, hmm? and therefore we are left with V equivalent times V equivalent is simply V one times A one G S plus B one divided by A equivalent times G S plus blah blah blah. All right, and this can be written as V one times well A one over A E Q plus V two times A two over A E Q all the way up to the nth. plus pardon oh by the way is this uh, dimensionally consistent oh, well a a and a basically have the same dimension so this is indeed a voltage correct plus uh, v1 times b1 by a equivalent plus all the way up to V n times B n over A equivalent divided uh, multiplied by divided by G s which is equivalent to saying it is all right. So, so what are the dimensions of this? It is some voltage and obviously, the strength of that voltage source depends on it depends on the strengths of what are V1 through Vn or oh, they are the internal sources, right. So, clearly, it makes sense that uh, the voltage uh, source depends on the internal noise sources and A1 by AEQ, A2 by AEQ, etcetera, depend on the transfer functions from the internal sources to the output divided by these those A1 by AEQ basically quantify the relative strengths of the transfer functions from the internal sources to the output. Okay. Now, what comment can you make? Uh, so, this is uh, let us call this uh, 
V uh, A, all right. And what comment can we make about uh, the dimensions of uh, of this quantity here? This is current, and uh, this is I A times R S. All right. So therefore, to come back to our equivalent noise source, so we have V I. This is R S. Okay, and our equivalent noise source consists of of two components. One is V A, and the other one is I A times R S, and Well, this is my internal network, whatever it may be, but here I have gone and made sure that all my um, all my noise sources are null. In other words, the network is noiseless and uh, this is the output. Okay. Now, does it make intuitive sense that this noise source, this equivalent noise that you have here, does it make intuitive sense that that depends on R s? I mean one thing you can say is that what can I say, you know it just comes out of the math, right. But is there intuition, I mean does it make uh, uh, intuitive sense that we should have a term which is proportional to R s? Any thoughts? Okay, uh, fair enough, right? I, I mean, and uh, the easiest way of understanding this is the following: as R S becomes larger and larger, right? What comment can you make about the influence of V I on the output? Oh well, as R S becomes uh, tends to starts becoming uh, larger and larger, you know, the connection between V I and the network becomes weaker and weaker, and therefore you should expect the transfer function from V I to V O to be to kind of become smaller and small, right? Okay, which basically uh, uh, so uh, and uh, but the noise due to the internal sources that is what it is. Okay, I mean if you remove if if you remove the uh, the input source and R S altogether, there will be the internal sources will cause some noise at the output. Correct? Okay. But as R S becomes larger and larger, the no, uh, the uh, uh, the noise caused by the internal sources remains largely the same at the output, right? However, the transfer function from V I, which is also the transfer function from that equivalent noise voltage source, keeps dropping. Correct? So if you want to achieve the same noise that you see, right? As R S becomes infinity. Or R S as R S becomes larger and larger, the only way to do that is if the strength of the of that equivalent input noise uh, uh, voltage becomes larger and larger and must be proportional to R S, right? Because asymptotically, the transfer function from V I to V O will will fall off as as R S. Okay, I mean unless you consider you know pathological cases like input impedance being infinity which is uh, which uh, you know does not exist in practice right ok. Uh, input impedance of a network being infinity only exists in the textbook ok. So, in reality there will be some capacitance between uh, 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 the input and, and ground and uh, so basically as R s becomes larger and larger you will find that the transfer function must basically become uh, the uh, the transfer function from uh, vi to vo keeps uh, 
falling down and if you want the equivalent noise source to have the same effect as, as uh, uh, all these myriad internal noise sources, uh, the strength of the noise source better go up in proportion because otherwise you know th this equivalent noise source has to get multiplied by the transfer function to give the same output noise. So, if the transfer function is going down the strength of the noise source better get keep going up that is the intuition why you see I A times R S all right. Now, we are in a bit of a bind right because uh, remember what was the aim of our whole project when we started off what were we trying to do? I mean, when we started off this whole discussion on uh, you know equivalent noise source, Wh what we were trying, I mean, the, the big picture is that you know here is a network that I am going to give to you, uh, the consumer, right? And just like how I'd give you the two port parameters of my uh, amplifier, I'd also give like to give you something which has the same uh, noise behavior, right? Okay. And in other words, that is the reason why we started off this, uh, this input referred noise uh, discussion. So, that you the user can take this information and put that in your, I mean you are uh, presumably building a bigger system. You want to see how the noise of, of my block impacts your system. So, what you would like to do is take the model of, of, my, uh, uh, of my two port including noise and you know plop it inside a, inside you know a bigger model. Right? Okay. Unfortunately, the way we have it right now seems like, and we can say, well, here is the input referred noise, okay, or the strength of the input referred noise source. But there is a problem. And what is the problem? You think? Oh well, you know, we'd ideally like that input referred noise source to be a property of the of the network, right? But it, uh, uh, you know, the way it appears here is that it looks like it, it obviously depends on uh, RS and we also saw uh, you know why that makes sense, right. Uh, but we are now stuck with uh, an input referred noise uh, uh, spectral density or uh, you know uh, whatever voltage which um, depends not only on the network through V A and I A. Remember that V A and I A are only uh, dependent on all these quantities only depend on, on the network, they do not depend on RS, okay. Is that clear by the way? Because that those A, B, C and D terms are all independent of, uh, uh, of R S, right. So, these are only network dependent though the ones circled in blue and uh, so we are in a bit of a bind. Fortunately, it turns out that you can if you stare at this, right you can uh, uh, it turns out uh, you know that I can move voltage sources around. So, if I make this uh, I A times R S, R S and then V A, right. And then you recognize that you can do a naught into Thevenin transformation there and uh, you see that well you can get the same Thevenin equivalent for this box if you did this. So, you have V I. R S, then you have uh, V A and you have I A and here is the network which is noise. All right, uh, and uh, you know, how do we know that this is correct? Well, if you look there, what is the Thevenin equivalent? 
What is the Thevenin resistance? RS, what comment can we make about the Thevenin resistance here? RS, okay. And uh, what comment can you make about the Thevenin voltage uh, on top? VI plus VA plus IA times RS. And what comment can you make about uh, the Thevenin resistance, uh, I mean Thevenin voltage of the lower on the uh, in the lower uh, uh, circle? It is the same VI plus VA plus IA times RS. So, these two are evidently equivalent. So, now what can you say? You stare at this picture and then therefore, what do you give the user? Well, you say that this is the equivalent noise representation of my of my network right ok. And uh, so, now this representation is independent of the source resistance and both V A and I A are are properties of the network alone. All right. And the reason is that uh, the V A and the I A depend only on V 1 through V n which are noise sources that are internal to the network they depend on A 1 uh, by A E Q etcetera which all depend only on the A's and the B's remember are terms which do not uh, are, uh, are terms in the determinant uh, uh, of uh, 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 the M N A matrix or uh, with you know appropriate uh, columns zeroed out ok, which do not depend on G S right. So, in other words they are uh, only properties of the network. Hmm? Another thing that I would like to point out is that remember uh, see finally, V A and you know I A are uh, uh, within quotes uh, you know uh, noise quantities because V 1 through V n are all noise sources. So, the spectral density of V a can be easily found by oh well uh, you know S V 1 of f times mod a 1 by a equivalent whole square and and uh, and so on and so forth right. Uh, can we comment on whether V a and I a are independent or dependent? Pardon? Why are they dependent? Well, Remember that V 1, V 2, blah, 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 V n, are they independent or dependent? They are generally independent because they are all noise from different resistors or different transistors, they do not know what is going on in the other transistor, right. But V a is some linear combination of V 1 through V n, I a is some other linear combination of V 1 through V n. So, what, com uh, what comment can you make about V a and I a? I mean is there some relationship between the two or they are completely independent? Both are basically taking forming the linear combination of some bunch of independent sources correct ok and therefore, these two will be these two will be in general dependent. So, V A and I A are dependent in other words the noise sources V A and I A are correlated. Okay. So, this is like uh, you know uh, uh, Indian marriage you know arranged marriage you basically uh, uh, you know the each party is making enquiries about about uh, the bride or the groom as the case may be right. Now, what do you do? Oh well uh, you know uh, you ask the neighbor you know is this fellow ok or like you know uh, you know does this guy come home drunk at night at, at 3 in the morning and make a ruckus ok. Uh, 
well if you ask the neighbor uh, you know the, the neighbor on the left side and the right, neighbor on the right side okay uh, the information you get is most likely going to be i mean this this fellow is a random phenomenon but you are simply right uh, uh, you are looking at uh, you know alpha times random and then beta times the same random so you ask both neighbors you basically are not going to evidently get you know phenomenally uh, new insight okay if you ask his boss in the office and you know his neighbor then you it's you know each one is looking at an independent aspect of uh, the person's performance so it's uh, you know you basically uh, uh, there also there will be correlation because you know uh, it is still looking at the same person but uh, hopefully there will be lesser correlation okay